What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi Coach. Welcome to video number four of this flight scope setup video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the data points of angle of attack, smash factor, and low point. These are gonna directly correlate to your contact. So without further ado, let's go do this thing. So let's start off with angle of attack. Now, some of you guys have probably heard this in my YouTube videos, but I'm gonna give you the basic definition first, and then we're gonna go over some parameters for you guys. So the basic definition is, are you hitting downwards when you hit the golf ball? Are you hitting level or are you hitting up? Now with that, they measure this relative to again, the horizon, right? Now they also use something called degrees. So if you're hitting upward three degrees, it would look maybe something kind of like this. Again, three degrees is not a lot, but you'd be hitting upward slightly. If you're hitting upward, or sorry, if you're hitting zero degrees or neutral, Again, that'd be level with the horizon. And then if you're hitting down like this shot is, three degrees, you'd be hitting downward and a downward blow. So now you're probably thinking, okay, so what is good for what club? Typically, with your irons and your wedges, you're gonna wanna have a down blow, right? You're gonna wanna be anywhere from, let's say, negative one to maybe even up somewhere around negative six, right? Somewhere in that range is gonna be where most of you guys are with your irons. Now, when you start getting to your hybrids and your woods, but you're off the ground still, you're probably gonna be still hitting on a downward blow, maybe if anything, zero or neutral, but you're gonna be very minimal. So it's gonna be like negative one, zero degrees, maybe even negative two at the very most, somewhere in that range. Now, once you get to the driver and you're hitting it off a tee, now you're gonna wanna be anywhere from kind of like negative one range to about positive five, maybe even positive seven or seven degrees on the upper blow. Again, a lot of this depends on your club head speed. So the main thing you should think about with angle attack, the slower my club head speed, let's say I'm swinging my driver at like 37 meters per second, the more on the up I want to hit and the more loft I want to have for distance, but that's going to be for another video. But for now, let's just focus on angle attack. The faster I swing, it's okay to be a little bit more on the downward blow, even with a driver. Let's say I'm swinging my driver at 52 meters per second. I could actually get away with hitting like one degrees, two degrees down and still hit the ball quite far. However, if I was swinging 35 meters per second, I hit down on the ball one to two degrees, I'm actually gonna be losing quite a bit of distance. So with this angle attack, what I'm hoping is that you have already taken a lesson from me I've told you what angle attack numbers that would be best for you for certain clubs, and then you can just go ahead and track it. If you haven't taken a lesson from me, I think the best rule of thumb is just do what I told about uh, earlier was if you swing pretty slow, make sure your angle attack is on the shallower side, right, negative three or less. If you swing very fast, you can get down on the ball just a little bit more, but we're hoping that you've already taken a lesson from me because it'll be a lot easier to get the exact numbers that you want. All right, so moving on to smash factor. So smash factor is really the ball speed divided by the club speed. It's just a good representation of how fast the golf ball left the face as well as how efficient it left the face. If you have a really low smash factor number, it means that you didn't have very good contact and the ball's not gonna go quite far. If you have a better smash factor number, the golf ball's most likely gonna go further. So to give you guys some ranges here, this is a five iron that this player is currently playing. If you're hitting a five iron, a good smash factor range is anywhere from about 1.39 to about 1.43 is where you're gonna see most people. If you get a 1.45, that's a pretty good strike right there, but most people are gonna be in the 1.39 to 1.43 um, range would be most likely. Now a driver, what you're looking for is you wanna be anywhere from 1.42 to about 1.51. That's kind of the range with driver. You wanna be kind of in there. That would be a good hit with driver. Anywhere from kind of three wood down to about five iron, you're gonna be around the same range of the driver. You're probably not gonna see yourself get to the 1.50 when you're not hitting driver, but you're gonna be somewhere in that range. And then if you guys are actually hitting wedges, you're gonna be actually slightly less. So like, let's say pitching wedge, they're about eight iron, seven iron range you might be below 1.40. You might be in the high 1.38 range, 1.37 range. Now again, we're hoping that you've already taken a lesson with us and we should have already told you what smash factor numbers are good for you for which clubs, but that's a good rule of thumb. Again, smash factor is a great indicator of how good your contact is. So I think it's one of the most important things to be tracking when your contact is very poor. 
Now moving on to the, uh, the last data point, which is gonna be low point. So low point is basically, where does the sweet spot of the golf club reach its lowest point in the arc of the swing, right? So typically with irons, you wanna have a low point ahead of the golf ball. So in this particular case with the five iron here, this player was 2.7 inches ahead of the golf ball low point. That's maybe roughly somewhere right around here. So the sweet spot, this is the golf ball here. This is where the sweet spot reaches lowest point. It's gonna be ahead of the golf ball with irons. Now a driver, typically if you're hitting up on the golf ball, you're gonna to wanna to have the low point behind the golf ball, right? Because if you can get the low point behind here, it's gonna be now hitting on the upward part of that swing arc, and that would allow you to hit the golf ball or hit the driver with an upper blow. So you're probably thinking, okay, Kiwi Coach, what are some ranges here? Well, this is really dependent on club head speed as well as what club you're hitting. So typically, if you have a really slow club head speed with driver, let's say again, that 37 meter per second, you're gonna to wanna to have a low point that's like four to six inches behind the golf ball. That way you can actually hit with an upper blow. Let's say if you're like um, 32, 33, 34 meters per second with like a seven iron, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a low point that's just ever so slightly ahead of the golf ball with your irons, but not, nowhere near like three inches ahead or five inches ahead. If you're three to five inches ahead, that's more so someone with faster club head speed. That would be what you'd wanna do. Slower club head speed, you always want to get your low point pretty close to the golf ball with irons and then with driver definitely behind it. Faster club head speed players can get away with being a little bit more ahead of the golf ball throughout most of the swing. But again, we're hoping that you've already taken a lesson and I've told you the low points that are good for your particular golf swing that would make your practice the most beneficial. Okay, so without further ado, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. We're gonna, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about curvature this time going over some specific data points about how to control your curvature this will be another important one for you guys to watch so i'll see you guys in that video